Hello and welcome back. In this episode, we're going to look at creating a brand new ASP.NET Core Web API application. And then we're going to look at how we can add authentication into that API project. So what we're going to want to do is right click on our identity server solution, click on add new project. And you're going to want to select ASP.NET Core Web Application. And from the type dropdown, you're going to want to select Web API. I'm going to give the project a name of simply API. And we can see here Web API, C Sharp, no authentication, and Docker support Linux. So, what we can do is hit create, like so. And this will create us our brand new. API project. We can see just up here at the top we have API as our new project and within that we have a properties folder with our launch settings.json. We have a controllers folder with a weather forecast controller. We have app settings.json for production, app settings.development.json for our development app settings. We then have our program file, our startup file, and also a weather forecast model just here at the bottom. Now, what we're going to want to do first of all is open up the launch settings.json and you'll notice the application URL has the same port numbers as our identity server. Now this will cause a conflict if these are both launched at the same time simultaneously. So what we can do is simply increase these by two and that means that these won't then conflict with the port numbers that we gave to our identity server. So if we now come up to the top right, you can see we have two additional run configurations for API and API with IS Express. If we select the API run configuration, and if we run that, you'll notice it will take a moment just to build. And you can see here, we now have our API spun up in the browser with a weather forecast endpoint. You'll notice if we click on try it out and then we click on execute, you can see we get a list of weather forecasts back in our response body. So that's essentially how you can uh, create a brand new API project. And we're going to now add authentication into this project. So if we close the browser for now and stop the application, we can come into our startup class and you'll notice configure services already adds controllers into the application. We also add that uh, swagger uh, gen into our services and we give it a basic name and also title and version like so. Feel free to change those to fit your particular API. Down in our configure method, if the environment is development, then we use the developer exception page. We also set up Swagger and the Swagger UI. And we tell the Swagger UI where our OpenAPI spec file is located. And we also give our API a name again for the Swagger UI to display. Next up, regardless of environment, we use HTTPS redirection, which means that any HTTPS any HTTP connection, sorry, will automatically be redirected to HTTPS. We then configure the application to use routing. We also use authorization. And last but not least, we say app.use endpoints, and then we map controllers. This essentially tells the application to automatically map the controllers and endpoints that we define here into our uh, routing logic. So what we're going to want to do now is add authentication into this startup class. So what we can do is right click API, click on manage NuGet packages, and we can do a search for JWT bearer. And you can see here this Microsoft.ASP.NET-Core.authentication.jwt bearer is the package that we want. If we install that package into our API project, like so, we can then come up to our configure services and just beneath our add swagger gen we can say services dot add authentication jwt bearer defaults dot authentication scheme to configure the jwt bearer as the default authentication scheme and we can then say add jwt bearer like so 
and this will give us an options callback that we can use to customize the JWT bearer authentication. So we can say options.authority and this authority is the issuer of the bearer tokens. So we can say HTTPS localhost port 5001 because that is the URL that the identity server runs on HTTPS and port 5001. Now, of course, this is all well and good in development. However, when you come to productionize the application, you'll want this URL to be dynamic depending on whether you're running in development or in production. And that is where the app settings files come into play. So what we can do inside the app settings development is create a new uh, property underneath login called authentication. And within that, we can say authority. And we can then give this a value of HTTPS localhost port 5001. If you're then deploying this application to production, you can then come into the app settings and do the same again. However, this time you can replace that URL with the URL of your production identity server. Because I'm only running in development for the moment, I'll just get rid of that from the production one. But that is essentially where you would fill in property with exactly the same name and exactly the same nesting structure, but you'd give it a different value with your production URL for identity server. So that's how you can use the app settings to dynamically uh, specify configuration based on different environments. And last but not least, we can come into our startup and we can then say configuration and authentication colon authority, like so. So that tells our uh, startup when it's setting this authority, it says to go and look at the configuration, which includes app settings and also things like environment variables, etc. It looks for a key of authentication, which is this key here. The colon then specifies to uh, move one layer deeper in the object nesting. And it then looks for a key called authority. So it comes in to this one level deeper. It then looks for a key called authority. In this case, this value here, HTTPS localhost 5001. And it will then pull up that value and give that value to the authority of our JWT bearer options. So that is essentially how you can use this uh, app settings to uh, configure your values differently in development and production. So last but not least, we actually need to protect our endpoints. So in order to do that, we can come into the weather forecast controller and you'll notice that we have these attributes on the controller class and also on the get method. If we just wanted to apply authorization to a single method, then you can apply the authorize attribute like so to simply one single method. Alternatively, if you wanted to apply authorization to all of the methods inside of a controller, then you can move the authorize attribute to be at a class level. So in this case, with the authorize attribute on the weather forecast controller, this means that every endpoint inside this controller will have authorization applied to it. Finally, Last but not least, back in the startup, if you come down to this app.useAuthorization and just above it, we can say app.useAuthentication. And that will now configure our application with all of the authentication middleware. And if we now run it again, give it a few moments to build. And we can see once again, we're presented with the same Swagger page that we were presented with before. However, if we send a request to this endpoint, you'll notice that we now have a 401 response with the www authenticate header set to a value of bearer, which indicates that we need to provide a bearer token in order to authenticate with this API endpoint. So that's covered how you can set up authentication within an API project. I hope you found this useful. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.